Hey everyone, welcome back. The topic of this video is functions. So example one says to fix any issues in the following code. So let's see what it's doing. We have a function call print name with arguments Jane and Doe. And it looks like we have the functions definition below where it says def print name first last and then it's just printing the first and last name. So the issue here is that function calls come after the functions definition. So in other words, we need to swap the order of these around. And if we run this, it will run. And in fact, we get the next error in the code. So we have def sum numbers, looks like we're summing numbers and assigning new sum to a number. And then we're trying to print out the variable new sum. However, it's telling us that new sum is not defined and this is because of function scope new sum the variable is only defined within the scope of some numbers so this function once it's done new sum is just gone and we can't really reference that so to fix this we need to move this print statement to the same indentation level as some numbers and then we need to call that function after so maybe we sum three and four that's seven that works an alternative to this would be to return the value from the function. I'll comment out this way of doing it, but we could return new sum and then print some numbers, three, four, make sure our parentheses match up. And that gives us seven as well. Okay, next we're asked to write a function that uses the Euclidean distance formula to return the distance between two points. It's given here below, and it's a good candidate for a function because we're taking in four parameters, x1, x2, y1, y2, and we're returning something, in this case, d, if you wanna think of it that way. So first, before we do this, we'll need the math module. And this is provided built in by Python. You didn't have to install anything other than your normal Python to be able to use this. And if you want more information about this, you can just look up Python math module and you'll get all of the functions. There's a lot of trig stuff in there and a, a lot of other useful utilities. But more specifically for this problem, we just want math's square root function. And math provides all of these functions because this is what a module does. You've written modules before in your Python files, but when people originally wrote Python many years ago, someone specifically wrote this math module for you to be able to use. So we can use this by saying import math. And then whenever we wanna call a function from math, we say math dot, and then some function. In this case, it's SQRT, which stands for square root. So let's write this function. We'll say def for define distance x1, x2, y1, y2. And you could reorder your parameters if you wanted. Maybe you want the user to enter x1, y1, x2, y2, but just for this example, I'll order them this way. And then all we need to do is return the mathematical expression. So we'll say math dot square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And then we'll call this function. So print distance three, four, six, five, just as some example numbers and that should give us 1.414, which is correct. Just a little side note on functions. Anything past a return statement that successfully executes won't run. So if we jump to right where this function, this first function is called without even looking at it, y equals example one. So the Python interpreter is gonna go into your function that it finds, example one, it's gonna go back up and say, okay, I found the function example one, and oh, it returned one. So it's gonna jump straight back to this line with y equals example one, and set y equal to one. And note that print and x equals x plus five were not executed here. And this is because once a function returns, nothing after it is going to run. Now there's one caveat here that's worth mentioning, and that's, listed in the example two function. And this is why I say any return statement that successfully executes, anything past a return statement that successfully executes won't run. In this case, 
if n equals 4, it will return, and rest assured that these other two lines are not going to run. However, in the case that n isn't equal to 4, these two lines will run. So conditionals do play a part in this as well. All right, so example three says to write two functions, one that prints a student's name and GPA taken in by function parameters, and another function called from the first, which prints out all classes in the given list. So we're already given a function stub here, print student info, and it looks like arguments John Smith and 3.9 were passed in. So that helps us to just write this function anyways. We'll say def print student info name GPA, and then we'll just print out the info. So f stringing, we'll say student info for name. And then maybe we say GPA. And then we want to call this other function. So you want to say print classes. The interesting thing about functions is that we can actually define them before or after other functions. So in the first example, we had to define it before calling but in this case, if it's nested, it would work in either scenario, but just to stay consistent, I'll define it above. So print classes, and then maybe for each class in the class list, let's print it out. So first I'll do a message real quick, class is taken, and then for class in the classes, print class. And no, I did make a mistake there, and you can probably tell by the syntax highlighting that class is a reserved keyword. So we actually just want to put an underscore in here or something to signify that this does not refer to a Python class, which we'll learn in a few weeks. So finally, if we run this code, it will print out student info for John Smith, GPA 3.9, and all of the classes taken from that list. So that's it for our functions video. Hopefully you have a better idea now of parameters, arguments, functions, how to define them, their return values, as well as even modules and importing them.